Greetings family, peace and love to you and yours. This is Guru and thanks for visiting my channel. This video is about Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie who shuts down a white dude on what racism is. She flat out tells him, I'm sorry, but as a white man, you don't get to define what racism is. So Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie has no time for white men who want to redefine what racism is. The Nigerian feminist author appeared on BBC Newsnight on Friday with R. Emmett Tyrell Jr., founder and editor-in-chief of the conservative magazine called The American Spectator. So family discussing Donald Trump's campaign, Tyrell argued with host Emily Matulis' comment that Trump's language has been a racist. Quote, that's not true. He hasn't been racist, Tyrell said but Adichie wasn't having it. Quote, I'm sorry, but as a white man, you don't get to define what racism is. You really don't, she said. Quote, you don't get to sit there and say he hasn't been racist when objectively he has. <clears throat> so after this video that I show you, we're going to go over a few examples of Donald Trump's racism that have somehow escaped all of us. The first ever black president will be followed by a president who's endorsed by the KKK bomb. Where does that leave you? Could you pick some of the, I can't imagine anybody more marginal to American elections than uh, the KKK. I mean, every four years the KKK comes up because people like Hillary Clinton want to bring the KKK up. So it doesn't but shock you, tell you doesn't horrify you. They're holding a rally in December no, to no, celebrate no, his victory. Yeah, and so are probably the Knights of Columbus. Now, why don't you talk about the Knights of Columbus? Maybe you don't even know what the Knights of Columbus are. Another extremist group? Yeah. It's, it's the largest Catholic organization of ma uh, Catholic males in the country. Yeah. Let me just point out to you, it's inappropriate to talk about the KKK in the same sentence as Donald Trump or any Republican. He's a, uh, they're a utterly marginal. They wouldn't even exist if it weren't for every four years you trot them out. Chimanda. <laughs> Go ahead. Let me hear what you have to say about that. You know, I find it I find it really interesting. It seems to be a refusal to accept reality. So she's asked a question about the KKK, and it hasn't been engaged with, and instead we're being told that there's this other group called the Knights of St. Whoever. The point is the KKK exists. The KKK endorsed Donald Trump. The KKK stands for white supremacy, and that has to be acknowledged. That has to be pushed Bullshit. back on. Is there Bullshit. nothing on the campaign trail that he said about race that hit you? Yeah. Did you worry about any of it? No. In fact, you people keep magnifying it. Uh, the left in America and the left in, in Great Britain keeps magnifying it. But he talked about a lot of other things, and th those things should get and through. And that is possible. I mean, if, if you have a fifth of, of Latinos or Hispanics voting for Trump all the same, maybe race wasn't an issue. Even you know, I find that argument to be very troubling. The idea somehow that if, if Hispanic or even people, any people of color vote for somebody who's racist, it means he's not racist. I mean, every system of oppression has people who are in the group of the oppressed who somehow contribute to that oppression. So it doesn't even, it's, it's not even a valid argument to make that because Hispanics voted for him, therefore. I, I think what we should do is look at Trump for who Trump has told us and shown us that he is. So let's look at what he said on the campaign trail. That's, that's really what, because the only way we can judge the kind of president he will be is based on the campaign that he ran. But maybe he didn't believe anything that he said and maybe that's but, how but you it, win a but, but then that's the primary. problem because on the one hand we're told that Trump's appeal is that he says what he thinks and he says it like it is and that sort of thing. Well, but and then on the other hand we're told that somehow he doesn't really mean it. So which is it? There's something very troubling about that. No, I don't think it's Even Paul Ryan have accepted that Trump has been racist in his language. You don't. That's not true. He hasn't been racist. Text I mean, racism let, let me tell you, because, okay, of, the, you know, because, because of the racism, because if you're a white the... man, you don't get to define what racism is. Oh, I see. So I don't you really don't. I, so if you man say I have racist, a false you don't, consciousness? No, you don't get to sit there and say that he hasn't been racist, when objectively he has. Do you know and what? it's not about your opinion. The objective thing, racism is an objective reality, and Donald Trump has inhabited that reality. Do you know the false consciousness, which is the theory you're talking about, is a Marxist con concept. <laughs> and I have, in other words, I can't even... I'll open my mouth here because I'm a white male. Yeah, I'm just saying to you that Donald you know, Trump has shown us and has said things that are objectively racist. No, he so has not. It's not about my emotion. But how what is 
if, he said, if he says to us, for example, that a judge, a United States judge, is unable to judge him fairly because he is Mexican, that is racist. I want to be racist. I'm sorry, I'm the end of all. Judge Cur Curiel, and he didn't look any other color than my color. But well, that's not yeah. what well, it's it is. What, it's about what your candidate I, said. I'm going to move this on just for a final thought, which is will Donald Trump govern in the same way that he campaigned? No. Is, and that's a it's good thing or a bad thing? No, it's a proper thing. He showed you how he's going to govern starting uh, the other night when he was dignified, uh, charming, and um, very focused. I think it's very sad. It's, the, 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 I think the, the, the standards have been so lowered for Donald Trump that because he manages not to behave like a spoiled child, he needs to be praised. I mean, it seems to be, in some ways, it's a very, this is kind of a crude analogy, but it's kind of like, you know, throwing a little tantrum and letting a little child drive a very sophisticated car. And <laughs> so to say to us that we have to disregard everything <laughs> that Donald Trump said and did during his long campaign and judge him just on the one day after he had won the election doesn't make sense. What did you say that was so racist? Bob Thank you very much indeed. So family, before we go over 13 examples of Donald Trump's being racist, um, I just want to cover the interview you just saw with, um, with the two. And I just noted how, how uncomfortable he was. That man was so uncomfortable. You could see it in all his body language. He squirmed. He could not hold him his composure um, in front of everyone because she was calling him out on a reality that he was just failing to see. And he just kept asking for examples of how is Donald Trump racist. So we're going to cover those things. I'm not going to go into details about this, but as you can see from the title, you can do a search yourself and find this article and then get into the details. But I'm just going to cover those 13 examples here real quickly. So family, here's a running list of some of the most glaringly uh, racist things associated with Trump. We're sure you'll be adding to it soon. So number one, he attacked Muslim gold star parents. So family, Trump's retaliation against the parents of a Muslim U.S. Army officer who died while serving in the Iraq war was a clear low point in a campaign full of hateful rhetoric. Khazar Khan, the father of the late Army Captain Humanyan Khan, spoke out against Trump's bigoted ragged, uh, rhetoric and disregard for civil civil liberties at the Democratic National Convention on July 28th. It quickly became the most memorable moment of the convention. Okay, and as you heard in the video, he claimed the judge was biased because, quote, he's a Mexican. In May, Trump implied that Gonzalo Curio, the federal judge presiding over a class action against the for-profit Trump University, you remember that scandal, could not fairly hear the case because of his Mexican heritage. Quote, he's a Mexican, Trump told CNN of Curiel. Quote, we're building a wall between here and Mexico. The answer is, he is giving us very unfair rulings. Rulings that uh, people can't even believe. Curiel, it should be noted, is an American citizen who was born in Indiana. And as a prosecutor in the late 1990s, he went after Mexican drug cartels, making him a target for assassination by a Tijuana drug lord. Even members of Trump's own party slammed the racist remarks. This next one is the Justice Department sued his company twice for not renting to black people. When Trump was serving as the president of his family's real estate company, the Trump Management Corporation, in 1973, the Justice Department sued the company for alleged racial discrimination against black people looking to rent apartments in Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. The lawsuit charged that the company quoted different rental terms and conditions to black rental candidates than it did with white candidates and that the company lied to black applicants about apartments not being available. Trump called those accusations, quote, absolutely ridiculous and sued the Justice Department for $100 million in damages for defamation. Without admitting wrongdoing, the Trump Management Corporation, of course, 
settled the original lawsuit two years later and promised not to discriminate against black people, Puerto Ricans, or other minorities. Trump also agreed to send weekly vacancy lists for his 15,000 apartments to the New York Urban League, a civil rights group, and to allow the NYUL to present qualified applicants for vacancies in certain Trump properties. In fact, discrimination against black people has been a pattern in Trump's career. Workers at Trump's casinos in Atlantic City, New Jersey, have accused him of racism over the years. The New Jersey Casino Control Commission fined the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino $200,000 in 1992 because managers would remove African-American card dealers at the request of a certain big spending gambler. A state appeals court upheld the line. The first person account of, an, of at least one black Trump casino employee in Atlantic City suggests the racist practices were consistent with Trump's personal behavior towards black workers. Quote, when Donald and Ivana came to the casino, the bosses would order all the black people off the floor. Kip Brown, a former employee at Trump's casino, a castle, told the New Yorker for a September article, quote, it was the 80s. I was a teenager, but I remember, I remember it. They put us all in the back. Trump disparaged his black casino employees as, quote, lazy in, vivid, in vividly bigoted terms, according to the 1991 book by John O'Donnell, a former president of Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. And to that point, Trump says, and isn't it funny, I've got black accountants at Trump Castle and Trump Plaza, black guys counting my money. I hate it. O'Donnell recalled Trump saying, Quote, the only kind of people I want counting my money are short guys that wear yamluks, yamluks every day. He's referring to Jews, Jews, white Jews, that is. And we can all remember that he refused to condemn the white supremacists who were campaigning for him. So three times in a row on February 28, Trump sidestepped opportunities to renounce white nationalist and former KKK leader David Duke, who told his radio audience last week that voting for any candidate other than Trump is, quote, really treason to your heritage, unquote. When asked by CNN's Jake Tapper if he would condemn Duke and say he didn't want a vote from him or any other white supremacist, Trump claimed that he didn't know anything about white supremacists or about Duke himself. When Tapper pressed him twice more, Trump said he couldn't condemn a group he hadn't yet researched. Donald Trump is full of crap, of course, for saying that kind of lie. He knows exactly who these people are. And so with that, that he just flat out lied to all American people. And he lied to your face. So you accepted it, just letting you know he lied to your face. And you accepted it. And then, of course, we can't forget that he also questioned whether President Obama was born in the United States. Now, this is a president of the United States who served two terms. And Donald Trump could not admit defeat or his wrongdoing, ever. And this is the person who we now elected as the 45th president of the divided states of America. So family, long before calling Mexican immigrants, quote, criminals and rapists, Trump was a leading proponent of birtherism, the racist conspiracy theory that President Barack Obama was not born in the United States and is thus an illegitimate president. Trump claimed in 2011 to have sent people to Hawaii to investigate whether Obama was really born there. He insisted at the time that the researchers, quote, cannot believe what they are finding. I remember when Trump said that, but he ne never came out with the results or the reality. He was, again, full of cow manure. And of course, Obama ultimately got the better of Trump, releasing his long-form birth certificate and relentlessly mocking the real estate mogul about it at the White House Correspondents Association dinner that year. Trump treats racial groups as monoliths. 
like many racial instigators, Trump often answers accusations of bigotry by loudly protesting that he actually loves the group in question. But there's just as uncomfortable to hear because he's still treating all the members of the group, all the individual human beings, as essentially the same and interchangeable. Language is telling here. Virtually every time Trump mentions a minority group, he uses the definitive article the, as in the Hispanics, the Muslims, and the blacks. In that sense, Trump's defensive explanations are of a piece with his slander of minorities. Both rely on essentially racial and ethnic groups, blurring them into simple monolithic entities instead of acknowledging that there's as much a variety among Muslims and Latinos and black people as there are among white people. And of course, we can't forget Donald Trump's uh, tweet on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th of 2016, where he um, tweets a picture of him eating and it says, Happy... Um, Hashtag single de mile. The best taco bowls are made in Trump Tower Grill. I love Hispanics. And, of course, Donald Trump trashed Native Americans too. In 1993, when Trump wanted to open a casino in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that would compete with one owned by the Manchasetucket uh, Pequot Nation, a local Native American tribe, he told the House Subcommittee, on Native American affairs that quote they don't look like Indians to me they look like Indians to Indians oh Trump then elaborated on those remarks which were unearthed last year in the Hartford Courant by saying quote the media had infiltrated Indian casinos and then of course we cannot forget that Donald Trump encouraged the mob justice that resulted in the wrongful imprisonment of black men of the Central Park Five. Okay, and so in 1989, Donald Trump took out a full page ad, you've seen it before I'm sure, in four New York City area newspapers calling for the return of the death penalty in New York and the expansion of police authority in response to the infamous case of a woman who, had, who was beaten and raped while jogging in Manhattan Central Park. Quote, they should be forced to suffer, and when they kill, they should be executed for their crimes, Trump wrote, referring to the Central Park attackers and other violent criminals. Quote, I want to hate these murderers, and I always will. The public outrage over the Central Park jogger rape at a time when the city was struggling with high crime led to the wrongful conviction of five teenagers of color known as the Central Park Five. This was at the behest of the racist vitriol coming out of the mouth of Donald J. Trump. And then, of course, we have the video where he condoned the beating of a Black Lives Matter protester. You remember that, too. At a November campaign rally in Alabama, Trump supporters physically attacked an African-American protester after the man began chanting Black Lives Matter. A video of the incident shows the assailants kicking the man after he was already fallen to the ground. The following day, Trump implied that the attackers were justified. Quote, maybe the protester should have been roughed up, he mused. It was obviously disgusting what he was doing. And then, of course, you can't forget that he also stereotyped Jews or white Jews, I'll say, and shared an anti-Semitic meme created by white supremacists. When Trump addressed the Republican Jewish coalition in December, he tried to relate to the crowd by invoking the stereotype of white Jews as talented and cunning business people. And of course, we can't uh, forget about his crooked Hillary makes history meme. Um, Donald Trump was full of, uh, how shall I say, just crap and of course we know he treats african-american supporters as tokens to dispel the idea he's racist at a campaign appearance in california in june trump boasted that he had a black supporter in the crowd saying quote look at my african-american over there <laughs> look at my african look at him trump continued are you the greatest 
Trump went on to imply that the media conceals his appeal among African Americans by not covering the crowd more attentively. Hmm. And I'm going to end this off with this that he said, quote, when Mexico sends his people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. He said that about Mexican Americans and Mexicans in general. That was Donald J. Trump. So family, I'm going to end this off here going on 21 minutes. Um, just want to say that to Mamanda Ngozi Adichie, she certainly schooled um, this guy, what's his name, uh, Emmett Tyrell Jr. She schooled him um, about racism and about Donald Trump and his racist rhetoric. As I just gave you those examples, there are plenty other examples to go from. I know we can't cover them all in one video, um, but I just got to say that she was very articulate in how she explained the situation to him and he just seemed like he was really really uncomfortable and um, again I had to show you those examples because again they like to talk with a forked tongue they like to say one thing but actually the reality is something totally different and when he says that oh Donald Trump is not saying anything racist or anything I had to back it up and show you family exactly what Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie was trying to explain to this man he seems to still have no clue but with that said family you tell me what you think leave me a comment like share and subscribe thanks for watching family I really appreciate your support peace and love to you and yours this is Guru and I'm out